Today we're continuing on our NHL playoff preview series for the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs and we're looking at the Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues. We'll break down this series coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned today, we're continuing on our playoff preview series. This is video number seven out of eight. The only series that'll be left after this is Oilers Jets, and that series doesn't start for another couple of days, so certainly stay tuned for that video that will be coming out sometime either later today or tomorrow at the latest. Uh, but for now, we need to talk about abs and blues because this series gets started later on this evening. So if you've missed the other videos in this series, we're going to break down the regular season statistics, compare uh, how these teams did, goals for, against special teams, all that kind of stuff, and see where the advantages and disadvantages lie. We're going to compare their goaltending and their top scores, followed by the end after we analyze all that, a quick prediction for me on who is going to win this series and how things are likely going to play out. And of course, I want you to leave predictions in the comments here as well. So let's kick things off and start with some regular season statistics review. So first up, let's look at the Avalanche here. They had the best record in the NHL, 39-13-4 for 82 points. And the Avs are your division winners in the West, as well as the President's Trophy winners for the most points in the NHL regular season. So they had an outstanding year, and they want to continue that on here. But they do have a tough opponent in St. Louis, even though they were the fourth place team and certainly uh, you know, had their fair share of ups and downs all year. They're not going to be an easy out by the Avalanche by any means here. Now the Blues finished, like I said, in fourth place with 63 points with a record of 27 20 and 9 during the season series the avalanche did win uh five out of eight games so they had a five and three record here against the st louis blues but the st louis blues did win the final two games of the series so they probably feel pretty good about the fact that they've beaten the avalanche the last couple of times they've faced them however there could be some different lineups on both sides here than they've seen the last couple of times that they've squared off i mean unfortunately we might not have David Perron this evening for the St. Louis Blues. He wound up on the COVID protocol list and uh, as I record this video at least it looks as though he may not be off in time for game one uh, but he might be getting cleared. I was looking for clarification on that and it wasn't completely clear before I went into recording this so certainly check out the pinned comment down below if I got additional info I will update that as the information becomes available but it's looking like Perron will be out for the first game and of course the Avalanche have had Nathan McKinnon out the past I believe it was five games who's going to be returning for game one so certainly uh, you know a, a, a nice addition on one side and a big loss on the other which could further complicate things in this series especially on the St. Louis side now let's compare the remainder of their regular season statistics here now the Avalanche were the top scoring team in the NHL with 197 goals uh, that's certainly quite a juggernaut there uh, you have a goals against of 132 which is really good as well third best in the NHL that puts them at plus 65 that's phenomenal uh, no wonder they won so many hockey games this year the St. Louis Blues on the other hand scored 167 goals for 13th best and they allowed 167 goals for 19th best so their plus minus here is an even zero so major difference between being even versus plus 65 so I think the Avalanche certainly have an advantage of being the more offensively potent team and they also have an advantage based on their regular season play of being the better defensive team and keeping the puck out of their net as well so that's certainly it uh, looks really good for Colorado and will be an uphill battle for St. Louis. On special teams, the power play for the Avs was 22.7% for 8th best, whereas St. Louis had a record of 23.2% success rate for 6th best. So clearly the Blues, even though they didn't score as much as the Avs did at 5-on-5, five five, they had a slightly better power play. That could be an advantage. I mean, it is a, a very minimal difference here, so those numbers very well could turn out to be fairly even in the postseason, but if one of those special teams on the power play is better than the other, that could certainly make a big difference, but based on regular season play, we would expect that to be relatively close now from the penalty killing standpoint the abs were also the eighth best team at 83.1 percent but the blues on the other hand had a 77.8 percent success rate on the pk for 25th best so when you throw out the abs power play against the blues and the, a weaker penalty kill on the st louis side that could be trouble and even though they're both these teams power plays were fairly equal in the whole season yeah, that could be a mess for St. Louis. If they get themselves in penalty trouble, a team like the Avalanche with all that firepower is going to make them pay, and that could be the difference in this series. For St. Louis to really stand a good chance here, they need to stay out of the box, and they need to have a special team advantage here because things are not 
looking good when you come into the postseason with the 25th best power or penalty kill, sorry, that's not good. I mean, that's something that you need to keep the puck out. And playoff hockey is usually low scoring, and you can't give the other team more advantages and tucker out your top PK guys because that's a recipe for disaster. So we'll see how things go. On the face-offs front, uh, both teams were relatively close, but the Blues did have an advantage. 53.4% uh, on the Blues side, of course. Not a huge surprise having guys like Ryan O'Reilly take a lot of draws uh, for fourth best, and then the Avs had 51.6, again for eighth best. So certainly, I think it's fair to say that the Avalanche are the better defensive team overall, the better offensive team overall, um, and you know what? Special teams, you can probably say, for the most part here, I would give a slight advantage to the Avs uh, because they have a better PK, and their power play was pretty much the same as they're pretty close to the Blues all the year. So really overall, like I said, the Blues are going to have their work cut out for them here going into this series. They're going to need some exceptional goaltending, which we'll take a look at here next. But first, I just want to pause for a quick break here from our channel sponsor. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. Of course, with Manscaped, we have a special offer here for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers where you can get 20% off and free shipping on all orders at Manscaped.com. Now, of course, Manscaped just launched a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a fantastic product. They've taken the level up here, even again with the skin safe replaceable blades. Uh, they have it's waterproof, it's wireless charging, uh, has a travel lock on it, uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing. So, certainly a terrific product. Now, many people associate Manscaped with their trimmers, which is certainly uh, kind of their top product, but they do have a lot of other great options as well, uh, including what they call the Weed Whacker, which is another trimmer for your ears and nose. And they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well, which also keep you fresh and are terrific as well. So, certainly, Manscaped has a lot to offer. And we certainly highly recommend all of their products. So check out manscaped.com and use promo code TSH for 20% off and free shipping. All right, so we're back here. Thanks for watching that sponsored ad from Manscaped. Certainly a big part of our channel here the past couple months. We appreciate their support and your support of their products as well. Uh, now let's take a look at a goaltending comparison between these two teams based on the regular season stats. Now with the Avalanche, uh, we're obviously going to have Philip Grubauer be the main guy for Colorado. He had a record of 39-1 and during the regular season with a very stingy 195 goals against and a save percentage of 922 and seven shutouts. Grubauer had a phenomenal season and certainly will be a big part of this team's success moving forward. I know there's a lot of questions, at least there has been in the past. I'm not sure if they'll get answered this year. I know Avs fans hope they will be. If he can be that playoff goalie or not, there's been a lot of talk the last few years. Do the Avalanche need an upgrade in goal to really be cup contenders? And I think right now he's proven that, based on regular season play at least, that he's the guy and that they don't need an upgrade. But we'll see how the playoffs go here. He needs to add some playoff success to his resume, I think, to really make fans believe and to really get himself probably, you know, his next contract to be a longer-term, more lucrative deal as well. Now, his backup, uh, it could be one of two guys. We could either have Johansson or Dubnik. I'm not really clear as of the recording of this video who's going to be that number two. I don't think it matters too much. Grubauer will certainly play the whole way, provided that there's no injuries or anything like that or they don't have any blowouts, which, I, again, I don't expect. Uh, Johansson did have the better stats, though, during their time in Colorado. So for right now, we're going to go with him. He had a record of 5-1-1, a 206 goals against, and a 913 save percentage, putting in one shutout. Uh, Dubnik, during his uh, short tenure in Colorado as well, had a record of 5-3-2 with a 3-2-6 and an 886 save percentage. So I would think Johansson might get the nod to back up, but we'll see how things go here when they open the series tonight. Now, on the St. Louis side of things, you get Jordan Bennington, who's going to have to be the Jordan Bennington of the playoffs a couple years ago when they won the Stanley Cup. Uh, in my opinion, he hasn't been quite as good ever since then. That's a pretty you know difficult task for him to duplicate as well. Um, but certainly ever since, uh, ever since that Cup run, he's been good, but he has hasn't been at that level. So uh, right now for his regular season play, Bennington had a 18, 14, and 8 record. It's not fabulous. Uh, 265 goals against and a 9-10 save percentage and no shutouts all year, which is unusual for him too. Um, so certainly not terrible stats. Like it's not like he had an absolutely horrid year, but it certainly could have been better. I mean, you'd like to see this, uh, the goals against be down a little bit and the save percentage be up a little bit. I mean, he's at that point right now with these stats that, like I said, it, it's good. It's just, you know, the win in the playoffs and when you're going up against a powerhouse you need him to be not just good but great and maybe even steal a game or two and i know based on his 
past playoff performance when they won the cup a couple of years ago that he's capable of doing it. At least he proved that he was. Can he do it again is the big question here. And uh, whether or not he does, I think, could mean the difference here in this series. Of course, he'll be backed up by youngster Vili Husso, who's obviously fairly inexperienced when it comes to playoff hockey. Uh, Husso had a 9-6-1 record uh, with a 3.21 goals against, an 8.93 save percentage, and a one shutout on his record. So certainly not... Tremendous backup goaltending stats. They certainly had to cut Jake Allen and move on from him during the offseason to save money on the cap, uh, which provided you know a lot of other uh, areas to be able to be filled. But at the same time, you lose that experience on the back end uh, and between the pipes. You know, having that really confident backup goaltender there, and, and you know, it shows. Looking at the difference here, major difference when you got a, a kid coming in who's never played before versus a, a steady experience backup. So we'll see how they do. But right now I have to say, based on regular season play, uh, the Avs and Grubauer definitely have an advantage. I think he's been the better goalie all year. But Bennington, if he can be playoff Bennington from a couple of years ago, could certainly make that very interesting and possibly even outplay Grubauer. And I think he needs to do that, in my opinion, for the Blues to really stand in a good chance. Now, lastly here, let's take a look at the top scores and see how things compare in that regard. We'll look at the top six for each side. On the Avalanche side, they were obviously led this year by Miko Rantanen, 66 points. The main reason he was ahead of uh, McKinnon is because of the time that McKinnon missed, but uh, what might have been an eight on the, on the forefront there otherwise, but uh, he still put up 65 points, still had a, regu- a really solid year. Uh, you had Landis Cog at 52. Uh, you got Burakoski at 44, same with Kale McCarr. Then he had a tie for the sixth place here between uh, Kadri and Sam Gerrard, both with 32 points. I mean, you got some high-end talent there, and when you got uh, you know McKinnon, Rantanen, and Landis Cog up front, that's a pretty potent three guys in your top six uh sometimes they play together sometimes they move them around but still um, you know they're capable of dominating a game in a series mckinnon is capable of taking things over on his own so you know it's a quite a supporting cast it's fair to say that they have higher level elite offensive talent on that side than they do on the blue side but let's take a look at their top scores which is going to be david perron like i said who's likely missing game one uh due to the COVID protocol list who had 58 points that's a massive blow to st louis to take him out of that lineup absolutely huge and if he can get back in for the rest of the series uh it could be a difference maker for sure of course you get ryan o'reilly captain uh, number two at 54 points mike hoffman at 36 braden shen at 36 jordan kairou at 35 and defenseman Tory Krug at 32. So certainly, I think, like I said, there, there's a lot of talent on both sides. Some of the guys of the Blues in their top scoring list, like Krug and Hoppen, were not around for their cup victory. Uh, but still, enough of those guys are still there that they know how to win. They got a great coach in Craig Ruby who can get them going and keep them structured. Uh, and they're going to have their work cut out for them. I mean, clearly, the Avalanche not only are heavily favored when it comes to the odds makers out there, uh, but they're the pick by a pretty big chunk of the population that they're doing predictions to win the Stanley Cup this year or at least make it to the final. So, obviously, to make it that far, you're going to win out your division and then go to the final four into the semifinals here. And personally, I am also picking Colorado. I think, uh, statistically speaking, you could possibly see the case that it could be a mismatch. I don't think it's going to be though because the blues just have too much heart too much talent and they have that like i said that ability where they won before they know what it takes and i think they'll put up a bigger fight than the stats might uh you know think that they could but i still see the abs winning it, it could go six games i don't think it would go seven i think six at most and, and then the avalanche will come out victorious but barring some unforeseen circumstances i just don't see how the avalanche can lose here especially you know if guys like Perron or Tarasenko are going to be in or out of the lineup. Like that's going to be, even if it's only short term, it's still big. And the Blues are in a situation where I just don't know if they can compete with a high end talent on the other side. And if they can get behind the eight ball early, and that's just so hard to get caught up. It becomes a short series real fast. So I think the Avalanche will certainly be the victorious team here and move on to play the winner of Vegas and Minnesota in the next round, which I know I predicted Vegas, but we saw last night in game one, Minnesota taking it in overtime with a one to nothing score. That series is going to be tight. And even though I said in that series, like, you know, I picked Vegas. I said, this could be the one that I'm wrong on uh, and have an upset. I mean, it wouldn't be shocking. I'd be a little bit more surprised in this one here if the Blues upset the, the Avs, but the uh, the Wild have given the uh the the vegas golden knights uh fits all year so we'll see if they can continue to do so and how this west division 
will ultimately play out. So again, leave your predictions down in the comments. We can discuss further, and hopefully we get some uh, great entertaining hockey in this series like we've seen in the other ones so far. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh,